Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Evening Jones. All right, if you're watching at theevenjones.com, log in, use whatever profile you got, go ahead and do that. Once you do, you can participate in our chat rooms. You send in your questions, I'll answer them. Um, or you can do the video thing, but honestly, nobody's done that in like two or three years because I can't trust y'all. Uh, question. Y'all shook up yet about this uh, coronavirus? Anybody? Like, 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 are y'all, y'all ready for it? Like, I was walking to work. Maybe it was last week, week before. I'm not sure. And somebody had put out the sign. They were saying they got their masks. And, like, I ain't really tripping so much. So here's my thing about the corona, like, with respect to whether or not, like, I'm tripping on it. The fatality rate behind the corona is, like, higher than you want it to be, right? I think it's at 2%. People saying the flu might be more dangerous. Nah, nah, nah. The flu ain't coming in at 2%, homie. Like, 2% is pretty high uh, for, like, a fatality rate on a virus of this sort. And apparently there was a press conference on. I didn't watch it. That did not make people feel better about the situation. Uh, Anyway, but 2%, like, that's 1 in 50. I mean, again, that's higher than you want, but... If I got it, I don't think I'm necessarily going to be, like, afraid I'm going to die myself. Somebody going to die. But, uh, I mean, I don't want my privilege showing or nothing, but. I feel like a lot of those people who are dying of this are people who do not have insurance. And it is very tragic that we are in a place in this country where people do not have insurance. Um, like, that's real messed up. But I got insurance. Therefore, I feel like if I got it, I feel like I can do something about it, right? And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, right? But I, I ain't really heard nothing about how they, they I feel like, I feel like if I get it, I can do something about it. Okay, so like on that level, I am not shook. But what I haven't really seen a lot of is like a description of what it's like if you got it. Like, is this just like the worst cold ever? I would personally like to know a little bit more about what it is to live with the coronavirus because I'm not in a place where I'm worried about dying of it. I would just like to know a little bit more about what it is to live with the coronavirus. I saw some here that says it can give you a heart attack. Is that true, guys? Can it give you a heart attack? Let me look up some symptoms right now. Because I feel like that's the information you need. Uh, Because I went to look up something on one of the pages, and honestly, I just didn't feel like I was getting the information I needed. Okay, here we go. Common variable immune deficiency is a disorder that impairs the immune system. People with CVID, this is, by the way, per uh, the National Institute of Health. Um, People with CVID are highly susceptible to infection from foreign invaders such as bacteria or more rarely viruses often develop recurrent infections, particularly in the lungs, sinuses and ears. Pneumonia is common with people in people with CVID over time. Recurrent infections can lead to chronic lung disease. Affected individuals may also experience infection or inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract here which can cause diarrhea and weight loss. I I really can't afford it either. Uh, Abnormal accumulation of immune cells causes enlarged lymph nodes or enlarged spleen. And people with CVID, immune cells can accumulate in other organs, forming small lumps called granulomas. Hold on, let me make sure I'm looking up the right one. It's the CVID-19, right?
Like somebody, that's the right one. Okay, because I put that in Google. COVID-19. Oh, let me see if that gets me something different. COVID-19 symptoms. Thank you. Apologies if I got you scared about, like, getting that leaky booty. Um. Okay, so the symptoms. Wow, that was a totally different disease. It is amazing how a typographical error can change what you think is going on. So the symptoms are fever, cough, and shortness of breath. Yeah, that doesn't sound pleasant. I don't want that. I don't want that. Um, wow, I expected the symptoms page from the CDC to be a little deeper than this, but no, nah, that's what it is. I did a couple more clicks and thought I'd find out some more, and no, nah, that's not how it went at all. Okay, so like if you got the diarrhea, that's something completely different. Um, you go to a different doctor for that. But yeah, fever, cough, and shortness of breath. Yeah, I don't really want to experience any of those things, to be honest. So I was thinking about getting one of them masks. Yeah, except what I saw about the mask is they say that you shouldn't wear the mask to try to stop from catching it that you should wear the mask if you have it to stop the spread of it. And I'm just letting you know right now, that is going to really slow down the sales of masks because this is a nation of selfish people. Once they already got this, they got it. Like, I imagine that this is like the chicken pox, right? Like, you got it once, you good. At least you good for a little while, right? What, what the antibodies, isn't that what they call it? Anyway, I imagine that's that. So basically what you're telling people when you say this is that mask is really just you telling the world that you got the cooties. You understand what I'm saying? Like, if the purpose of the mask is to stop the spread, what it is going to do, in effect, is simply identify people as they the ones that got it. And they're going to have to get wherever they are wearing that mask. And I'm telling you now, I don't know how much that mask is really going to help stop the spread of the disease. I say that seriously. I honestly don't know, right? But I know that if you walk in a place where ain't nobody got the corona, and you the person walking in wearing that mask that says, I got the corona, your money is no good there. That's right. You will not be getting that number three. It's not happening. Don't matter how big a tipper you are. It ain't going down. Man, here says uh, says something about all these masks uh, being like all these masks being sold out. I feel like these masks are sold out from the warehouse. I don't feel like they sold out on the streets because it ain't that many people just walking around here with masks. And I live in New York. Like if there's going to be a place where you go see it all over the place, it was going to be here. Right. Like I think that people are stocked up on the wholesale level, but I don't really know. Like, I feel like if you know where to go, you can still get them on the retail level. Like you tell me, I don't know what it's like in, the, in whatever town you from. Are you just seeing people walk around all the time wearing masks? Because I'm not seeing people walk around all the time wearing masks. But you might. Except now I know the mask is just your way of telling everybody you got the cooties. I'll tell you this, too. If it's going to be people walking around in these streets with that mask on, we are about to see an increase in the sale of uh, them Altoids, or them icebreakers, um, you know, various chewing gums. We're going to see them all because if you got to be spending your whole day smelling your own breath. That don't sound pleasant, my dude. That don't sound pleasant at all. I also saw something that said that if you get the mask, that facial hair kind of affect the seal around it. And before I realized that the mask was simply just going to be a way for you to tell people that you got the cooties, 
Um, I was about to be like, I guess I'm about to be getting that booty face. Because if I got to walk these streets in the mask, I just got to walk these streets in the mask, baby. I'm down. Might help me hide out a little bit. In fact, what I think I'm going to do is, like, if you think about this, man, like you see, well, you people who are watching can see it. If you just listen on the podcast, you'll have to take our word for it. But, like, as we do this right now, I got me, like, a black hoodie on, right? What I could do is wear a different color hoodie, like, every day and then put the mask on. And so, like, if I had me, like, an orange hoodie and then put the mask on, I'm Scorpion. If I had me a blue hoodie on and I put the mask on, I'm Sub-Zero. Get that green and I'm Reptile. What's the one I would be right now? What What is it? Is it a Noob Sabot? Would that be me right now with the black? Oh, yeah, Smoke. Forgot about Smoke. Just saying. Find a way to style your mask up because you know it, man. Like, the mask start going around, man. You know how people are. They're going to figure out how to floss them. Like, I remember once I was talking to one of my partners, and I was like, yo, man, if I was Jewish, I would have, like, all the fly yarmulkes, right? Like, if I was like if I was one of the, I don't know the way to say it, but, you know, they don't all walk around wearing yarmulkes. You dig? So, like, if that was my steez, I would, you know, had to fly yarmulkes. I was like, I don't know why I don't see more fly yarmulkes. And my man was like, yo, he was in law school at the University of Miami. He was like, nah, my partner, he got multiple yarmulkes. He be, he be, he be freshening his yarmulkes up. I didn't know people did that. I don't have that kind of experience with our Jewish brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? So they be out here getting fly with them. You realize how fly people going to be getting with them joints, with them masks? Like, uh, I remember that lady. Um, I don't remember her name right now, but you know the one in Congress with the hats? Y'all remember that? I was telling y'all about how she had the hats and then the Trumps like started talking bad about her, about her hats. And I was so mad because like once they started talking bad about her hats, that meant that like I couldn't, t- I couldn't say nothing about the hats now because then I would be like them. Remember that? Anyway, you know damn well, man, if she got to be out here wearing that mask so she don't catch that corona, her mask going to be fly as hell. And you know this. You understand this. So, like, you think they're going to be out here, like, at the mall, at the kiosk, be dazzling in the mask? Because I feel like it's going to be some grannies out here with them fly masks. You're going to see somebody with a mask that got ski wee across it in rhinestones. You're going to see it. Wow. So they're saying some people got pictures on their phone or the mask so that the face ID will work. Damn. Anyway. Oh, yeah. My bad. I figured I probably should have talked about this when the podcast started. Like, I get on the podcast every week and I try to figure out how I'm going to start and I, like, try to think about um, you know, something that's happened to me in the course of the week or uh something like that. And yeah, I didn't talk about that one thing. I guess I'll talk about it now. Bo, are you at a place to talk about high noon being over? We're beyond thankful for you, man. Also, Joe Budden shouted y'all out today. Well, I say thank you to Joe Budden for that. And am I in a place to talk about this? Yeah, I guess. Um so as I send this out for people to you know, like get off the Twitter and like come check out what we're doing or whatever, because I mentioned this, I'm going to give it a couple of seconds. Like Lance, we can even cut this part out uh, when we put the podcast out. I just figured I sent that part out there. You know, people, they messy. Right. So they're going to come run over here and try to figure out what it is I'm talking about. They're going to be hoping I'm going to come out here and I'm going to like flame the place or something like that, you know, because that's how people operate under these times. Um, so, you know, couple, yeah, oh, yeah, I see the numbers starting to creep up a little bit. Um, yeah, I can talk about it. Like, I'm not in an emotional place about this. Um, so this is what I'll say, at least as of right now, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the best I can to say something and nothing at the same time. I'm sure you totally understand where I'm coming from here. Okay. So people who have followed me and my work 
for a long time. You know, some of y'all been with me for literally like 15, 20 years. I've been doing this for a while. We've been doing this particular podcast, what, nine? It'll be nine years this summer that we've been doing this particular podcast, you know? So a lot of y'all have been around with me through, I don't want to call them ups and downs because there really haven't been any downs. What there have been is some, wait, what just happened, right? Like, wait, wait, this radio show is not coming on anymore. What do you mean the radio station went out of business? Uh What do you mean this other radio station went out of business too, right? You know, like it's been those kinds of things. But early in my career, I spent a lot of time talking to people about um, basically all the times I got fired, right? The things that didn't go well, like I flunked out of graduate school. um, I didn't have a contract renewed when I wrote for ESPN.com, all that stuff. Like, And those kinds of things were kind of defining. No, in fact, defining is not the appropriate term. It was a major part of the story, though. It was a major part of the story as I told it. But honestly, for like the last 10 years, overwhelmingly, man, these have been wins. Everything has just kind of gone up. Um, Basically, every project that I've worked with over the course of the last 10 years has been successful in one way or another, right? Um, And so this show being canceled, and that's what happened. The show got canceled. This show being canceled, I haven't had anything like that happen in quite a while. But I have had something like this happen before. And so when you've had something like this happen before, at least for me, man, maybe I don't know how other people are wired about these things, but I, I can say it from where I am and who I am. Yo, it's cool. It's good. I mean, these these are the things that happen. They happen for all they happen to all kinds of people. They happen for all kinds of reasons. But in the end, this is just the kind of things that happen. And so people who are not me made a decision that I don't think is an unreasonable decision, right? Like I don't think I got nobody to be mad at about making that call. I know how things work. And I don't think anybody's like done anything to mistreat me or anything like that, or anything really truly to mistreat us. This is a call that they made with their airspace. Boom. There it is. That's their decision. Uh, ESPN put out a statement and they said that they were working on figuring out roles for me and Pablo. I can't tell you nothing about Pablo because that ain't me and he's a little bit busy right now. I can tell you about me, though. Right. We'll see. Like, I'm not being fired in this case. Like, I have had situations where I've been fired, but my show wasn't canceled. This is a case of a show getting canceled, but me not being fired. And so how it ultimately turns out, we will see. Um, But these are the breaks, man. This is how it goes. And this is the one thing that I can tell you. And I think I really properly figured out how to articulate this part today. It may have been yesterday. I can't remember, but there's something to it, right? How often do I get on a microphone or do I sit in front of a camera and talk about somebody losing their job, right? Like, how often does my job call for me to matter-of-factly say, this person should lose his job, or this person will lose his job, or, like, get up and predict that somebody is going to lose lose their job? I do that all the time, right? And when I do it, I look at it, and I'm like, hey, man, this is just the business they've chosen. It's that kind of thing. If I'm going to take that approach when I'm talking about other people, what other approach am I supposed to take when it comes to something that happens to me? Right. This is the same thing. You know, like I ain't no professional athlete necessarily. But look, man, we're doing a show on the network that if you want to do sports. That everybody wants to do. All right. There's a very finite amount of real estate that they have to share or to give or allocate, however you want to put it. But there ain't that much inventory that there is to be given. All right. And they decide to take that real estate and do something else with it. Got it. The real estate is scarce. That's what it's going to be. Do you realize, like, getting the real estate in the first place is a big deal? My man Rod told me that. Like, I think when I first started doing highly questionable, he was like, hey, man, success is getting a TV show. You know? And we got that. And we gave it a run. And, well, we ain't going to be running after March. But... We did it. We rolled with it. We gave it a run. Um, and I'm good with that. I am good with that. 
And I do hope that at some point uh, for a lot of you that you will be able to be good with that. Right. Because it ain't for me to tell you how to process it or how to receive it or any of those things, especially while I'm telling you absolutely nothing about the circumstances. Right. It's not for me to tell you how to feel about it. And so I know for a lot of people, it will it hurt them to see this happen. For a lot of people, it hurt them to see it happen is the way they look at it to me or to Pablo or anything like that. Um, and I don't want to be like too dramatic about it, but there is a coping and processing and all this, yada, 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 right? Like all that stuff. Uh, and there's room for people to do that. And I hope that you are at a point where you get some peace with it because I am absolutely at a point of having peace with it, right? I don't come out of this with nothing bad to say really about anybody in that way. So... Yeah. Am I in a place where I can talk about it? I mean, while telling you nothing, yes, I could do that. And this is where we are. And I'm good. And the people have asked, are we still doing the right time? Yeah, we did episode of the right time yesterday. We're going to do an episode of, the, episode of the right time tomorrow, I guess, or whatever. I mean, yeah, tomorrow. We're doing it tomorrow. Um, yeah, we're going to roll. You know? What's funny about this is somebody got in and said, how does it feel to be unemployed come March? Hey, buddy, I don't know how to break this to you, but aside from the fact that I'm not going to be unemployed in March, you need to remember. I have made a lot of money doing this. Like, I wasn't even really that shook about being unemployed when I was broke. Like, being unemployed at this point. Hey, man. I mean, you'd rather have the money coming in, but I'll find a way to make it work. I swear, I promise. Also, Lance, get that dude out of here. Uh, it's the J dude. Anyway, appreciate the question. Let me see what else we got here. in the world is calling me oh that's one thing too man my phone blowing up like hell <laughs> <laughs> i got everybody calling me and a whole lot of people misunderstanding whether or not they are on the bomani wants to talk to you right now list most of them are right some of them not sure Are you one of the people who didn't realize until this week that the thong song was just the same verse rep repeated three times in a row? I actually had peeped that long ago. My read on the thong song has been, and maybe I may have even read this somewhere, but to me it seems pretty obvious what happened with the thong song. The thong song is dudes fucking around in the studio. Like, that's all it is. If you listen to the thong song, it is clear. Nobody wrote that down. No, 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 no. They just got in there and they just started messing around. I don't even know if they had the beat ready already, but this sounds like this started off as something that was just kind of funny. And then somebody listened to it and they was just like, oh, this is kind of jamming. Right. And then they made it happen. This is what I'll always remember about the Thong song, though, because Cisco's ego went through the roof after the thong song like you think about this that cisco album sold like six or seven million copies or something like that but it's not like cisco like full-on fell off right it's not like cisco inundated us with wagness he was just gone because he managed to alienate just about everybody which is so bananas but i remember he did some award show i can't remember which one it was but i remember he came out and before he started singing, with all the drama in the world, he was like, and this is the last performance of the thong song. And he was so serious. He was so serious about how like, he was retiring the thong song in one way or another. And I'm like, bro, this the thong song. But yeah, just go listen to that. And like I say, he just be messing around. It sounds like a bunch of dudes just fucking around in the studio. But they made it work. Like somebody at the label was like, no, that's a single. No, 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 that's a jam. I'm like, really, this? No, 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 that's a jam.
Appreciate the question. Let me see what we got here. Hope this isn't too close to being a sports question, but have you ever walked in somewhere and immediately known you weren't welcome? Asked because I didn't know anything about Tyson Fury and quickly realized I went to the wrong bar when he came out, which reminded me of when my mom went to a concert with her white co-workers, which turned out to be a Little Skinner show. I one time went into a gas station in eastern Kentucky. I kept that brief. Real brief. Appreciate the question. See, we got here. I know you get a lot of crazy MFers barking at you online. How do you not let that bring you down? I have a different question. Well, I guess I'll answer that question with a question. Um, how do you let it get you down? And I don't mean to be snide as I ask that or anything else, but like for me, hey man, these people don't know me. You know what I'm saying? Like, we are talking about people who do not know me. They're not saying anything that taps into, like, something that I already believe in myself or fear to be true or whatever it is. It's none of that. These are strangers. And one thing about the online stuff, and people who have followed me here for a while have heard me detail this for years, but you never know who's watching you play for the first time. The thing is, I started doing social media and that stuff before like I got on national television and well before I got on regularly and I was able to watch the way that people talk to me and how that changed simply based upon the fact that I was a person on television. And so I was always kind of looking at it as a third person phenomenon because it was so hilarious because I knew it wasn't about me as a person because I'd seen what it was before I became the person on television. And so these people get out here and say whatever it is they want. Feel free. Knock yourself out. I got a whole lot of filters up now, so I ain't even necessarily got to see this stuff. Um, but on top of it, it's just like, okay, you don't like me. Do you know how many people that I dislike? Like, you know how many people there are that I out here that for no good reason I don't like? You know what I mean? Like, I got all kinds of people I dislike. It's going to be some people out here that dislike me. They probably don't even actually know why they dislike me. They just do, right? That's your right, you know. Got it. Uh, somebody said, aren't people usually surprised with how you are in person while you're talking to people on Twitter? Uh, well, I mean, I at least believe myself that I am more... I think that if you meet me in person, you'll realize that, like, I ain't, I ain't really got no Hollywood in me. I'm not that type. Like, you're going to get a pretty regular person if you come across me. And I think that part is kind of surprising. But there are also people that think I'd just be really mean or they expect I'd be really mean. And it's because I'd be slamming these people on the Internet. But I always say to those people, if you go take a look at who the people are that I slam on the Internet, like. They earn it. It's kind of easy for you to avoid it. Right. Just don't be a jerk. You know. Anyway, appreciate the question. Let's see what else we got here. But Nate Dogg have had a bigger legacy had he passed. I'm all right. Would Nate Dogg had a. I'm sorry. I, I don't understand what you're trying to say. All right, guys, need some more questions. Huh. 
Who is this asking you be going shopping in NYC a lot? What are you trying to do? Rob me? Like, what kind of dumbass question is that? You be going shopping in NYC a lot. Yeah, I just be traipsing down Fifth Avenue with bags on my arms and doing like spins and stuff. I feel bad for these kids losing all their favorite rappers so young. But then I forgot when I was in I was in high school when Big and Pac died. You find it funny how age changes perspective. Uh, I don't know if that's really what's happening here. <sighs> like this Pop Smoke uh, died and I honestly had never heard of him until he died. Like that's the thing that, that makes this difficult for me to speak on is these cats that are dying now, um, like, I don't find out who they are until they're dead. Like, it's been a handful of them where I never listened to a note of their music until they were dead. Um, and I don't know who that's about, right? If that's about me, if that's about them, whatever. But the bottom line is, when I was a kid, we didn't have that many famous rappers. Like, we had famous rappers, but we didn't really have that many that were dying at that time. Like, you talk about Big, you talk about Pac. You know, like, Big L died in 99, but I just, like, I don't feel like it was just an endless line of people dying. But, like, we did have, for example, Fat Pat died. Um, I think Fat Pat died in 97. Um, you know, DJ Screw died, I forget what year, but, you know, you got that. But... Those are like local, like those are local Houston guys, for example. The difference between now and then is that now Fat Pat would have more fans outside of Houston. Does that make sense? So, like a Pop Smoke dude, or I mean, you can throw another name out there, whoever it is. The internet has kind of made it possible for more people to find out who these folks are when they are young. And so these kids now, they have more rappers. Like they're going to have more rappers die just because they have more rappers. We kind of got the rappers that the label gave to us or whoever the neighborhood superstars were. But these cats, they just have so many more of them that are coming around. And so invariably they are going to lose more just because we know who more of the people are. You know, because like Big and Pac, those are like the top two cats in the game at the time. You know, like Pop Smoke is not the same as that. All right, appreciate the question. Let me see what else we got here. Uh, okay, we got one. Snoop Dogg on that red table talk. The apology tour continues. So I didn't see him on red table talk. I tell you this, though. I feel like you knew it was about to be some bullshit when he showed up there in that turtleneck and that jacket. And by the way, I don't know if he had some tint on those glasses, but his eyes was the same color as that sweater. That's right. Same color as that sweater. Anyway, here's what I think we got going on here with Snoop. He ain't really got no backup that's going to help you make any money. Right? Like, his backup on this matter is angry black dudes. Angry, older, black dudes. That's his backup. That backup ain't really going to take him but so far. You understand what I'm saying? 
Like, 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 like that, that, that crew can only help you but so much. And Snoop is out here trying to get this money. Now, let me tell you who is cooler with the money. And that's Gail. Like, look, man, Gail worked for CBS News. Gail worked for Viacom. And if I'm not mistaken, Snoop was working for Viacom, too. Right, that uh, show with him, show with him and Martha Stewart was on Viacom too. No, 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 no. Like he might have won some points on the internet, right? He might have had some partners on IG that was down for him, but this put him on the wrong side of a lot of people, a lot of people. Because in the end, you can be a rapper, you could be all this, da da da. In the end, there are not many places where people will find it to be appropriate for you to call someone like Gail King a dog faced bitch. So, like, Snoop's got his money that he can make from doing the rap stuff, and that's cool. But Snoop make a whole lot of that corporate money, too. And he needed to come clean this up. And so maybe the Red Table Talk will help. I'm not sure. But somebody somewhere along the way seemed to have made it clear to him that, uh, yeah, you need to go fix this. All right, appreciate the question. Here we go with the Nate Dogg question. Uh, would Nate Dogg have had a bigger legacy if he hadn't passed too early? You popularize the trend of R&B singer featuring all hip-hop tracks. Two Crossed two coasts, went to the South with Luda, had a good single, da da No, no, because his time was up. It's T-Pain who really, truly found a way to, like, build on what Nate Dogg had done. And T-Pain... Like I'm, Nate Dogg's cool, but T Pain's like another level of talent to me. Uh, but T Pain's the one that figured out how to do the next level of it. The thing for Nate Dogg was Nate Dogg just didn't really. He had a like I got love. I think it's jamming, but Nate Dogg ain't really have no solo Nate Dogg jams, and that's the holdup. Like when you start talking about legacy and stuff like that, man, what's crucial? You got to have a hit. It could be an underground classic. It could be a pop hit, but whatever. But you got to have a hit in some form or another. And Nate ain't really got the hit. He's on some hits, though. Don't get me wrong. Hold up. Favorite dated rap line that sounds hilarious now? This is a good question. Uh, huh. I tell you this. What looks nothing looks more dated than seeing Puffy and them cats in them videos where they getting in Lexuses. You know how long it's been since the Birdman besmirched his booty with Lexus leather? Yeah, like if you go back and check out some of the stuff that even like Jay Z thought was fancy. Back in 1996, that is what'll make you crack up. That's right. The Lexus with them frog eyes got that on dub. Yes, they were excited about that PT cruiser. <laughs> is that catch driving accurate? Yes. Let me see what else we got here. Did you catch Jack throwing himself in the black Twitter panel? So I actually like saw that on the internet. And my first thought was, damn, I forgot to email them back because they had sent me something about doing it. And I just completely forgot. And then I saw the list of people who were there. And it's like, 
an interesting collection, at least to me, of people I'd really like to see and people I'm glad I'm not going to be in a room with. There really aren't that many people in the latter court category. It's really only a couple. I don't have any desire to call. Actually, I have every desire in the world to call out names. But, I mean, it's just bad look. But, yeah, I saw that Jack Dorsey was going to be there. And I got to say, and Jack taking a chance with that one. Like, I'd have some questions. Appreciate the question. Let me see what else we got here. What's up with all the kids being arrested at school? This little girl was just locked up for throwing a, t- a tantrum and she's five. Are teachers slash and advisors becoming lazier with how to handle students? Nah, I don't. I mean, I don't know if it's about people getting lazier as much as we let police do a whole lot more than we used to. Like, as a serious question, like, when do we start putting five-year-olds in jail? Like, I feel like that's something they weren't doing in the 50s and 60s. Like, I've heard all kinds of horror stories about the ways that black folks have been treated throughout all these decades. If they was locking them up at five and six at that time, somebody would have told us about it. Y'all know this. Somebody would have let us know if they was doing that at that time. This is a relatively new phenomenon. So, like, this wasn't even an option, apparently, for people before. And I saw the thing about the, the cop that had locked this little kid up and was bragging about how this would be the youngest kid that he had ever taken to jail. And I just can't figure out how anybody is ever thinking, yo, this is the best idea. This is the best use of my time. I'm going to take this little girl to jail. What? Like, I know a little bit about kids. Something like that, you ain't got to, like, carry out the entire threat. Even if you want to, like, it'd be messed up to pretend like you're going to send them to jail, right? Like, that would be kind of foul. But kids, all you got to be like is, oh, guess you're not getting ice cream after dinner. No, no, I want ice cream. And then you can calm this down. Like, one of my son, a little girl was like, I don't want to go to jail. Boom, this is done right here. Like, it's a wrap right here. And so the question isn't about the teachers and the advisors. To me, the question is, how is it that we're even going to let you get into the jail? Like, I feel like if you lock up a five-year-old when you get to work, your boss is supposed to be like, what? You did. You said. Are you in my office? Appreciate the question. Let me see what else we got here. Oh, it just might be time, guys. Yeah, I think we got through the questions we got to get through on this one. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here on the Evening Jones. Try to do this thing once every week or two. My man, Lance Gilliam, handles everything behind the scenes. Thank you, sir. Uh, remember, if you can't watch the Evening Jones live, subscribe to the podcast. Subscribe to the iTunes store. Subscribe to Stitcher Radio. Check us out at SoundCloud. We are also at the Google Play Store. Uh, I'll talk to you guys in, you know, whatever. Take it easy.